Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And we're following that deadly building collapse here in Florida, the very latest on that desperate search. Take a look outside with live cam 78 degrees at 430 this morning. Is rain in our future over the weekend or next week? Mike will let us know in just a bit. And good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is June 25th. I'm so happy to be here again, filling in for Stephanie. And Mike, when I walked out this morning, I felt a breeze and I was like, wait, did my mind just do that or is it a I mean, a little, bit you know, a little bit of a breeze is going to be kind of breezy again today like it was yesterday. So you look like you're pondering something. Well, no, I was I, I noticed the, the trees were moving this morning and there was one little gust that actually moved my car coming oh, into really? work. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't well, believe it, it. It will be, like I said, on the breezy side today. It's still warm, still humid, but it's nice to say the, the little bit of relief is in sight. Two more days. Two more days. We're, we're going to be like the two past days and three days and everything else. But anyway, okay, we're starting off, as we said, upper 70s, well above normal right now. There is plenty of humidity out there. Of course, these numbers, dew points, remain well up into the mid 70s, 77 at Stinson, which is just too humid out there. And of course, a little bit of a heat index to deal with as of right now. And you can add about 20 or more degrees to those heat index numbers, and that's what it will feel like later on this afternoon. Most everybody's going to be feeling like it's well up into the hundreds. Molds on the low side from yesterday's update, and uh, throughout the day, uh, 88 at noon, 96 for a high temperature today. And yesterday, we did hit 95, probably go up another little notch here and there. Again, kind of on the, uh, the breezy side, heat index well up into the hundreds, 105, give or take around there. And like I said, tomorrow, the same thing. Then Sunday, a slow little change and it's looking still promising for next week with some rain chances as well as lower temperatures. So it's a one two bit of relief coming in here. Details in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, big problems out there. First of all, good morning, sir. Hey, What's good going on? morning and yeah, we're right, Mike. There's definitely a lot of problems already that we're spotting. This one here off 90. Uh, take a look right here at the view at Transguide showing us a view from 90 at West, but uh, this crash actually happened in those eastbound lanes right now. We know that three lanes are impacted. You can see that we do have emergency crews that are out there working to get that scene clear. And what we know right now is that this possibly stems from an overnight shooting. We do have a crew heading out to that scene to get us more details on how this crash actually happened. But let's go ahead and jump to our maps and see where that's looking like uh, off Highway 90 eastbound right at South Zazamora Street. Right now, still early enough to where it's not impacting traffic, but we know again three lanes are impacted at this hour coming into the downtown San Antonio area. But as of right now, now things are relatively clear in and around the Alamo City. So let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times coming in from 90. Still a 19 minute commute time to get to the downtown San Antonio area. And if you are coming in from Bernie right now, 25 minutes on I-10, 27 minutes coming in from 281 uh, from Bull Verde. But bringing it back to this crash again, we do have a crew heading out to that scene working to get us more information on how this crash happened. But we'll be watching it right here in the traffic lab. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, the urgent round the clock search for survivors continues in the rubble of that building collapse in South Florida. At least three people have died. Nearly 100 people remain unaccounted for. ABC's Morgan Norwood is the scene in Surfside, Florida. This morning, authorities desperately searching for answers in these layers of concrete as families like Saria Cohen and her daughter anxiously wait for word about their loved ones. My 12 year old daughter, who's absolutely like beyond in shock, she's so close to, to her father. Who's going to survive that rubble? This beachfront condo building, a disaster zone. I have never seen so many ambulances and police in my life all at once. Surveillance video shows the horrifying moments. Parts of the 12 story building split in two, collapsing to the ground early Thursday morning. <laughs> Many residents jolted awake by the thunderous crash. You know, we just ran for our lives and it was nothing but just white, thick cloud of dust. Others never made it out and so many still unaccounted for. Nicholas Fernandez says three of his friends were staying in his condo, telling ABC's Victor Oquindo he's heard nothing from them. And you've tried calling them, you're trying everything, you non can't get a hold of them. Non-stop, non-stop with my family. Uh, just with the like, you know, ha having like at least a hope of like maybe the rescue team will hear the cell phone and they will have a clue. And now the big question, how this happened? Why did this building that stood for 40 years uh, suddenly collapse? Were there extraordinary loads? Uh, were there deterioration mechanisms going on? 
Were there changes to the structure made? They'll be looking in the field at the orientation of the debris, the way that it's broken, the way that the parts are stacked up against each other. The investigation into the cause could take weeks, even months, but for now, the focus remains on the search. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Surfside, Florida. San Antonio police make an arrest in a deadly shooting that happened at an East Side convenience store. Police say a witness at the scene pointed them to the Facebook profile of Rashawn Harris and identified him as a driver of a car seen leaving the scene that night. Officers say they learned Harris was the one who allegedly pulled the trigger and have charged him with murder. He's accused of killing Cameron Terrell Woods at Stanley's Ice House station along East Commerce near South New Braunfels Avenue. That was back on May 20th. Police say Woods was shot twice in the chest. According to an arrest affidavit, the victim and suspect had been arguing three days before the shooting. An exact motive remains unclear. Vice President Kamala Harris will travel to El Paso today. She'll be accompanied by Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Or this year, the president asked the vice president to oversee the country's diplomatic efforts to address the root causes of migration from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. According to the schedule, Harris will depart Joint Base Andrews around 5 this morning. After arriving in El Paso around 9.30 this morning, our time, the vice president is scheduled to tour the El Paso Border Patrol Station. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is concerned that a growing number of Americans are skipping their second COVID-19 shot as the Delta variant continues to spread. It's now estimated more than one in 10 Americans who've had their first vaccine have not gotten the required second dose. That's about 15 million Americans who could now be left more vulnerable to the more transmissible Delta variant of COVID-19. Add that to the 46% of the population who haven't been vaccinated at all and the risk of a widespread outbreak of the Delta variant heightens. Adults under the age of 30 are most likely to have missed their second dose. The White House is now focusing on young adults as a renewed focus of its ongoing strategy to fight the pandemic. Back here in Texas, authorities have arrested the suspect of this month's mass shooting in Austin. 19-year-old DeAndre Jamiris White was taken in custody without incident yesterday up in Killeen. U.S. Marshals and the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force and Killeen Police SWAT team worked to track him down. Authorities issued a murder warrant for him Monday and dropped charges against two other suspects. The next day, White is now behind bars awaiting arraignment. It's 437, about 78 degrees. And we have some NBA action for you, minus Kawhi Leonard. Plus, it's almost fight night, and the Alamo City is being represented by a world champion. That's next. Outside with live cam, We're looking forward to a break from the heat and humidity and a chance of rain. But in the meantime, Mike is talking extreme heat index values. More to come right here on GMSA. We are just getting started. 440 in morning sports. Former Spur Kawhi Leonard missed his fifth straight game in his third uh, in his third in Western Conference Finals last night as the best of seven series is now in Los Angeles for games three and four. Kawhi has not played since injuring his right knee in game four of the Western Conference semifinals against Utah. But the Clips are able to win without uh, him and eliminate the Jazz. Now there's speculation Kawhi won't be available unless L.A. is able to become the best of the West and head to the NBA Finals. Okay, meanwhile, the Western Conference Finals shift to L.A. for games three, uh, game three between the Suns and Clippers. L.A. try to avoid falling in an 0-3 hole, but the Suns get Chris Paul back from COVID protocol after missing games one and two. L.A.'s Paul George finds his touch early. First a 30-foot three-pointer, then a 20-foot baseline jumper. George scored 27 for the Clips and dragged L.A. back from the brink. Clippers win 106-92. The Clippers have cut their series deficit to 2-1 ending the Suns' franchise record playoff win streak at nine games. We are just one day away from San Antonio world champion Mario uh, Barrios, big title defense, fight against Gervonta Davis. They're now the headline on Showtime's pay-per-view worldwide broadcast tomorrow night at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. Yesterday was the final press conference for these two undefeated fighters that will climb to the ring for El Azteca's WBC Super Lightweight title. I'm just as good of a fighter, just as explosive, just as fast. And I mean, I, I have the size, you know, to present a lot of difficulties to tank. And um, that's exactly what I plan on doing. 
The pay-per-view event will start 8 o'clock tomorrow night, can be bought for $69.99. Another bad night for the San Antonio Missions in Frisco. Even though it was a high-scoring game, Rough Riders end up with the win. Final score 12-10. Missions have now lost eight of the last nine games they have played against the Rough Riders this season. Team returns home Tuesday where they're wel welcome Corpus Christi to town. And that's a look at morning sports. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Right. It's 442 and 78 degrees. Up next, the first look at the long-awaited intelligence report on unexplained aerial phenomena that's expected to be sent to Congress later today. The Pentagon is releasing a report today on what's called unidentified aerial phenomena. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the biggest question in the galaxy. Is the truth out there? And when will we know? They're the declassified videos capturing the mysterious sightings. <laughs> Something flying incredibly fast. And now, according to a U.S. official, the long-awaited intelligence report on unexplained aerial phenomena is expected to be sent to Congress later today. Retired Navy Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich, a veteran combat pilot, says she spotted a UAP in 2004 near San Diego. As a military officer, we're always conditioned to think friend or foe. There is a concern about national security, something in our immediate vicinity when we were conducting military exercises. So what's in the report? We'll have much more coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. 446. Well, back here on Earth, Stephen Cavazos, how are things looking out on the roads? It's clever. The truth is out there. It's like, I love how he threw in the X-Files <laughs> pun. Well, you know, it is uh, relatively quiet now, and it's really crazy how things have just quieted down in just the last few minutes that we've been here. Uh, but we do have an abandoned vehicle right here at Loop 410, right at Jackson Keller. Take a look. Uh, it looks like someone had just left, had some car trouble or may have left their vehicle behind. Uh, either way, it is out there, this vehicle that is, may, I'm not too sure about the aliens, but, you know, it's right there, so just be cautious if you're heading in that direction. Take a closer look on the map. Loop 410 right at Jackson. Um, not too sure which lane that was in. We're waiting for Texas to pop up that information. But again, be cautious of that if you're heading into that direction. Now, while it has been a relatively quiet morning, we did have an incident that happened here off Highway 90 right at South Zazamora going east towards San Antonio. Uh, looks like there was some sort of incident that stemmed from uh, shooting overnight and had first responders close at least three lanes. That is since clear, so thankfully it is nice and smooth. Uh, coming in from 90 from Castroville, so no big worries there. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump right back to Transguide here and show you how things are looking around the city. Very quiet right now, 90 at 36, 21 at Bitters. Nice and smooth so far, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, I uh, turned in fairly early last night. Were we able to see the full moon here in South Texas? There was a lot of clear skies. Good. Yeah, yesterday afternoon, and this is what a lot of folks were looking at. I mean, we've got a, a ton of these pictures this morning and just absolutely gorgeous and it'll be another nice uh, night for viewing it as it rises just as the sun is going down and this evening of course yesterday was technically the day of the full moon but it's awfully pretty uh, sunrise not gonna be anything overly spectacular this morning just because once again we have our morning clouds out there we did it 95 yesterday uh, a couple of triple digits down there around Catula Laredo 99 in Carrizo Springs and today going to be about, once again, same situation, maybe a notch or higher than that, or a notch or a couple of uh, degrees higher than that here and there. And then, of course, with humidity, once again, most everybody, well, just about everybody is going to be well up into the hundreds as far as the, uh, the heat index. Nothing to prompt the heat advisories, but of course, just, you know, take it easy. And if you're outside and doing anything, I was out cutting the grass yesterday, and boy, you really got to just gulp down the water and just do that every single day, basically. That's what all the experts always say in plenty of sunscreen. Okay, here's uh, the water vapor imagery. And once again, you can see the huge clockwise rotation. That's the high that's sitting on top top of us. That's the thing that is just really has not been moving too much. And that's what is suppressing any sort of rain around here. Uh, we don't get any, you know, really any change in the weather. We have those morning clouds and then some sunshine in the afternoon, still fairly high humidity, and that's going to be the situation through tomorrow. Now again, Sunday, we will see a couple of showers. Again, this is that broad brush, so not everywhere, but uh, the chances there for a few showers, a couple of thunderstorms later on Sunday, better rain chances Monday, and then also going into Tuesday, we have pretty good rain chances. And then on top of that, and by the way, rain chances will stick around Wednesday, not as great. And same thing on Thursday. 
there's the high sitting on top of us. But like I was also going to say with the cloud cover and some other features around here, that's going to hold temperatures. We're looking at just the upper 80s for high temperatures by next week. So that high is finally going to shift off to the east a little bit more. And what that will do is these little waves just disturbances. It's going to open the door for that. Plus, we get that unusual trough to develop up there in the northern portion of the country, and that's going to help to keep temperatures down just a little bit. Uh, just one little side note, you've probably been hearing about that up there in the news uh, up in Seattle with that high just plunked down on top of them. They are looking at record breaking temperatures up there in the Pacific Northwest. And again, on the flip side of it, we're going to see some pretty nice weather really starting Sunday and then especially going into the heart of next week. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today. Well, we're going for right around mid 90s again, kind of breezy heat index about uh, 105 or higher than that. And then the next few days tomorrow, same thing. Then we start to see the changes. So just make it through today and tomorrow. Uh, a couple of showers here on Sunday. Better rain chances. The best two days to see rain. And again, not everybody won't rain constantly, but it's going to be Monday and Tuesday. And we'll still have a little bit of rain around here middle of next week. And that's not a typo. 89, 89, 89, 89, yeah. oh, 89, 73, 89, 73. Yeah, but I mean, 89s. Normal is 93, 94. I'll take it. Yep, I'll take it too. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen will too. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. Okay, 451, about 78 degrees. Well, this weekend could be the biggest yet at the post-pandemic box office, plus lots of new stuff is debuting on streaming as well. We've got your lottery numbers. Pick three, six, three, one, Fireball, one. Daily four numbers, nine, nine, eight, four, Fireball, eight. Cash five, five, seven, 19, 29, 33. Texas two-step, eight, 25, 27, 31. Bonus ball nine. If you like movies, you're in luck. This weekend, some big name films are debuting on streaming and at theaters. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Man, we messing with magnets now? It could be the biggest opening weekend at the box office since the start of the pandemic. The Fast and Furious sequel, F9, in theaters this weekend. And co-star Helen Mirren tells me she can't wait for you to see it in a theater. <laughs> A movie like Fast and Furious in particular has to, really has to be enjoyed with an audience because part of it is is the audience reaction, you know, the shouts and the, and the laughter and the, and the talk back to the screen. F9 will only be in theaters, no streaming. Easy. I'm in. But another action movie featuring vehicles is streaming today. The Ice Road stars Liam Neeson as a trucker who has to drive in some dangerous conditions. He told me they shot the film in winter in Winnipeg, Canada. It got as cold as negative 35 degrees below zero. I asked him, I put himself through that. I didn't know. I'm Irish Catholic. We like self-flagellation every now and again, you know. The Ice Road is on Netflix. I gotta go in the dining room, okay? Yes, sir. Other stuff to stream this weekend, Wolfgang, a documentary about the life of celebrity chef Wolfgang Puck. You're very unpleasant. Okay. And the adaptation of The Mysterious Benedict Society, starring Tony Hale. Both of those on Disney+. Plus. Wait, what is that? Hot dogs and macaroni. Perfect, no notes. And on Apple TV+, Plus, it's season two of the animated musical comedy Central Park. And a big birthday for The Office co-creator Ricky Gervais. He's 60 today. You're so vain. while legendary singer-songwriter Carly Simon is 76. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. She's one of those singers who never ages at all, it no. seems like. It's going to be in my head is all it? Yes, day. <laughs> not a bad ear worn to have. No, it's not. All right, it's 456 and 78 degrees. Still ahead on TMSA today, we're getting a closer look at the deal reached between lawmakers regarding President Biden's huge infrastructure plan. Plus, Apple is showing off its new artist-themed fitness workouts featuring singers like Lady Gaga and Alicia Keys. Details ahead in Tech Bites. Ahead at 6, helping moms and dads become better parents. How the St. Jude's Children's Home is making it all possible. Take a look outside on the roads with Trans Guide. Stephen Cavazos is in-house. He'll have our latest updates on road conditions. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Crews continue to sift through a mountain of debris following the collapse of that condominium complex at Surfside, Florida, the latest coming up. And President Joe Biden has announced a bipartisan agreement on a pared-down infrastructure plan. 
Extreme heat and humidity going into the weekend. Mike's Friday forecast is coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is June 25th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So happy to be here for Steph this Friday and happy Friday, everybody. And it's going to be really warm out. Mike. Uh, Mike says if he if we're patient, if we hang on a few more days, relief might be in sight. Well, it's looking well as we get closer. Obviously, it's looking better and better. And as I mentioned yesterday, how the long range computer models, even going back uh, toward the first of the week, looking toward next week, everything is still very consistent. There haven't been any major changes to it, so that's always uh, really encouraging. And uh, we're looking at some decent rain chances as well as lower temperatures. Yay, let's hear it from the crowd for that one. So, okay, 78 right now, dew point 73. Yep, it's warm and humid out there. We're about uh, four or five degrees above normal. 96 for high temperature today. Normal high is right around the average high temperature, 93 degrees. So yes, we will be on the warm side of things, but then again, that number doesn't tell the whole story because you got to factor in the humidity and that's going to make it feel like it's up into the hundreds. The aquifer dropped down nearly a foot yesterday and the allergens mold is on the low side. All right, yeah, we got a little bit of a heat index to deal with this morning. It feels like it is uh, in the upper 70s and low 80s around much of the area and you can pretty much add roughly 20 degrees to these numbers. That's what it will feel like later on today, 20 to almost 25 degrees. So we're going to be looking at you know, 105 for a heat index, give or take a little bit throughout the rest of the afternoon. So very warm, very humid this morning. And then later on today, of course, it's going to be just hot. So we'll see. Well, pretty good sunset tonight. Sunrise, eh, not so great. And then also the moonrise tonight. Uh, look, sun sets in the west, moon's coming up in the east right about the same time when the moon is in its uh, full phase one day after that. Now, the weekend, hot start tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be like today and like yesterday, but then we start to see the changes on Sunday. That's going to include a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there, primarily off to the east, and then we get uh, some pretty decent rain chances going into the first of next week, especially. And look at that, upper 80s for high temperatures. That's just a I mean, a gift for the end of June and beginning of July. Boy, we don't get that very often, so we'll enjoy it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, had some big problems last half hour. Still around? Uh, not so much, Mike. And actually, we have some good solution or good resolution if you are going up to New Braunfels from 35. Usually, we talk a lot about construction that goes on out there. Uh, take a look right over here. The view from Transguide shows that things are looking pretty good right now. Usually, we show a lot of lights out there, a lot of delays, but it looks like that construction has wrapped up here along I-35 northbound right around FM 1103. So some pretty good news for our friends up over on 35 near New Braunfels. But we do have a stall, unfortunately, to talk about here off I-35 northbound a little bit further back right at uh, Weedner there. You can see that not causing real any issues right now because it's still early on. Not a lot of people out on the roads, but uh, just be kind and courteous if you do see that person out in that stalled vehicle and be cautious. Both hands on the wheels today, guys, and every day. So let's go ahead and take a look here around the Alamo City outline area. Areas. Things are pretty good so far. Nothing too major to report at this hour. But if one of the locations you're heading to is a downtown San Antonio area, we got your inbound times right now. Coming in from New Braunfels on 35, we are looking at a 26 minute commute time. Coming in from Seguin, things are looking green at 29 minutes. And coming in from Lavernia on 87, we got 24 minutes for you. So a little bit of a delay there, but that's not too out of the ordinary slowdown. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our gas prices. If you're going to be heading to the gas station today, uh, we got 264. The AAA is reporting right here in Bear County around the state. We're looking at 276 and around the country we got 308. So we have uh, about a cent or two increase from the last time we brushed, showed you these gas prices. So nothing too dramatic, but just so you know, before heading to the pump right now, but bringing it back here to 35 at FM 1103, things are looking pretty good. Mark Sarah. Thanks, sir. Late breaking news now. Two people being treated for gunshot wounds in San Antonio. Police say one of them is to blame. The shootings happened at a home on the west side in the 900 block of Southwest 36th Street. Our Katrina Weber is there live. Katrina, was this an intentional shooting? Well, that's what detectives are trying to sort out, but police say from what they've been told so far, this could have been an accident. Uh, they believe a man was playing with the gun when he shot himself in the hand, and then that same bullet traveled into the belly of his friend who was sitting next to him. It happened at this home across the street. Police have been working here ever since about uh, right before 3.30. That's when they got the call. Uh, detectives are questioning people who were in this home. We also have some video to show you from a little bit earlier. Uh, again, police say that uh, they did get the call about the shooting here. A uh, man about 18 years old shot in the belly when the bullet traveled through his friend's 
hand and then hit him. Uh, he was taken to a hospital with what they call life-threatening injuries. Now, the person who they say pulled the trigger while possibly playing with the gun, he took off in a car and headed for the hospital himself. But uh, they did say that he got a little panicked when he saw how much blood was coming from his hand. He pulled over and then called 911 himself. Police did find him a short distance away over on Highway 90 near Sarzamora. But again, police still investigating this shooting, which they say, on the surface at least, appears to have been an accident, someone playing with a gun. But they are still talking to people here just to make sure that everything adds up. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Florida fire teams have worked through the night in hopes of finding survivors in that Miami area, area building collapse that left nearly 100 people missing. At least three people have died, but officials fear that number may skyrocket as they dig into the rubble of the Champlain Tower South. Uh, as we said, more than 100 people, oh, rather, more than 100 people are accounted for, including 35 that have been pulled from the wreckage. The Champlain Tower South drew people from around the world, some to visit, some to live. South American officials said 22 people from four countries are missing. Israel has reported 20 missing citizens. There are also an undetermined number of Americans unaccounted for. Now to the major news on infrastructure. President Biden standing side by side with Senate Republicans outside the White House with a rare announcement, a bipartisan deal on infrastructure. This morning, developments are raising questions about the future of jobs, roads, bridges, and the internet. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with more details about this deal. President Biden standing side by side with a bipartisan group of senators, announcing a rare achievement in this polarized country. We have a deal. After several meetings, Democrats and Republicans struck an agreement on a $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan. The bill calls for $579 billion worth of new spending in areas like transportation, roads, bridges, and broadband for rural communities, including the largest investment in the rail system since the formation of Amtrak. None of us got what we all that we wanted. I clearly didn't get all I wanted. But this reminds me of the days we used to get an awful lot done up in the United States Congress. In order for this deal to happen, both sides compromised on what they wanted in the bill. What both sides agreed on? A promise not to raise taxes in order to pay for it. We've been talking about the need for a large infrastructure package for decades. Today, we are delivering. But not everyone seemed pleased with the deal. Some Democrats feel it doesn't go far enough. I think it is way too small, paltry, pitiful. And I will insist on a second package that not only addresses more roads, bridges, and other tangible assets, but also human infrastructure. The agreement fails to address climate change, as well as human infrastructure, like child care and education, something President Biden says he'll push for in a separate bill with just Democrats. Republicans responding, accusing the president of doublespeak. An expression of bipartisanship and then an ultimate on behalf, and then an ultimatum on behalf of your left-wing base. Now, taxes will not be raised to pay for this. Instead, the deal calls for reforming the IRS to close tax gaps and redirecting unused emergency COVID relief funds. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. 508, about 78 degrees. Well, still ahead, Microsoft is unveiling Windows 11. We'll take a look at those new features. And next, we'll tell you about how two local organizations are joining forces to help veterans in our community this weekend and what you can do to get involved. 78 degrees at 508 this morning. It's going to be hot out there, Mike says, but he also says there is some relief in sight. He'll tell you about that when we come back. Good morning, 512 Minority Veterans of America and the Pink Berets are joining forces to help all the veterans of our community this weekend. The MVA is hosting a supply drop to help veterans in need of essential items. Those items include non-perishable fruits and vegetables, hygiene kits, and event and even pet food. CEO and founder of the Pink Berets, Stephanie Gatta, says the supplies will be for any veteran, regardless of their discharge status or length of service. So knowing that we can open up this opportunity to veterans who are struggling or to families that are struggling to put a sufficient amount of food on the table or to provide the necessary necessities that the families need, um, I think that this is a great opportunity for them to just have some sort of relief. 
The event is happening tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Texas A&M San Antonio at Patriots Casa. You need to register ahead at the Minority Veterans of America website and complete an application and be an MVA member. 513, still 78 degrees. Up next, we'll get that first look at Windows 11 and how it's going to be different from the popular Windows 10 that most of us use right now. I have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzi. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieve 90% clearer skin at four months after just two doses. Sky Rizzi may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Nothing is everything. Now is the time to ask your dermatologist about Sky Rizzi. Wet dishes? Residue? Spots? It's not your dishwasher's fault. Simply add Finish Jet Dry 3-in-1 to rinse, dry, and shine your dishes. Solve three problems at once with Finish Jet Dry 3-in-1. At Philadelphia, we know what makes the perfect smear of cream cheese. You need only the freshest milk and cream. That one. And the world's best, and possibly only, Chamelier. Philadelphia. Schmear perfection. In today's Tech Bytes, Windows 11 has arrived. Microsoft's new operating system has taken on a Mac-like look. Among the changes, the Start menu is in the middle of the screen. Windows 11 should be live by the end of the year. Version 10 users will get free upgrades. Beginning Monday, Apple is offering new workouts as part of its Fitness Plus service, spotlighting musical artists. Users will be able to choose slow or fast and high or low impact workouts set to the songs of Lady Gaga, Keith Urban, Alicia Keys, and Jennifer for Lopez. Finally, an artistic masterpiece back to its original size thanks to artificial intelligence. The sides of Rembrandt's The Night Watch were cut away centuries ago. Researchers used AI software to recreate them in Rembrandt style. It's now on display in Amsterdam, another excuse to travel abroad this summer. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Time check, 18 minutes past the hour. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavasso's the roads looking quiet now, Stephen. Yeah, pretty quiet morning, Mark. Sarah, you know, view from Transguide shows that there's not a lot going on right now. Of course, we are watching things very closely as more people are getting out on the roadways. But again, pretty quiet morning so far. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how things are shaping up right now from a few of those shots to an in a bassy uh, things. Again, relatively quiet, which is nice as we head off and drive off into our weekends. Let's go ahead and take a look right now, though, at a stall that's still being reported here on TxDOT's website at I-35 northbound right at Weedner. You can see not causing any real delays right now. Still pretty green in this side of town going up to New Braunfels, but uh, definitely be cautious and courteous if you see some stalled vehicles out on the roadways. Now, we have spotted some slowdowns here a little bit further up heading towards New Braunfels right at I-35 northbound at FM 1103. It was actually slowing down here to about 12 miles per hour, but has since improved. You can see that yellow is an indicator. Things are looking a little bit better and with a lot of green. That means things are moving. There was some construction that was wrapping up, which we last showed you earlier this morning on GMSA. So good news there for our friends going up north to New Braunfels. But let's go ahead and take a look around the Alamo City again. Like we said, pretty quiet as we drive off into the weekend. Nothing too crazy to report right now. Bringing it back here to Transguide one last time 281 at St. Mary's. We are watching the roads closely, but so far it's looking uh, like a pretty good Friday. Thank you, Mr. Cavazos. You're welcome, Mr. Austin. <laughs> Mr. Osterhage. Yes. 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 You're like, Sarah. where's my father? Yes. I know. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we're formal here. It's Friday. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was supposed to be casual Friday. Anyway. It is. It is. I'm sorry. We, we started off on way too formal a note. It's yeah. beautiful. This is from last night as the moon was rising. Beautiful moon. That's going to be the same situation tonight. You'll be able to see a beautiful moon rise in most areas because clouds this morning are going to be uh, clearing out somewhat. And, uh, and it's pretty cloudy and pretty darn humid out there as well. And, of course, we're looking at heat index readings later on today. Same as it's been the past few days, well up into the uh, hundreds, 107, Laredo 105 in Catula. And we're not going to see that much of a change in the, the dew points, the amount of moisture the measure moisture in the atmosphere going on into next week, which 
is going to hold low temperatures still up into the, the 70s. You can't drop down below these numbers, but the high temperatures are going to be a different situation going in toward next week. So satellite picture right now, nothing uh, showing up there. Maybe, you know, once again, with this flow coming in here off the uh, the Gulf of Mexico, you can't really rule out just a straight little sprinkle or, you know, a little couple of drops. I saw a couple of drops yesterday morning driving around. It lasted for about two seconds. That was it. But just because you get so much of that moisture getting pumped on in here around the country. Obviously, there's a whole lot going on right here around the uh, southern Great Lakes, mid Mississippi Valley, and that's all kind of being diverted around us by that big high pressure, which is plunked down and it's usual. It's a usual situation or uh, it usually in that position this time of the year. Now, as far as the, uh, the forecast goes, we'll have our morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, same thing tomorrow. But again, we go into Sunday. There's going to be one or two showers around the area. If you have outdoor plans on Sunday, I don't think it's really going to be too much of a problem. But as we go into the late, late afternoon hours and the evening hours, we'll see a couple of those showers primarily off to the east. And again, this kind of, you know, broad brushes, as, as I like to say, but then better rain chances come in here on Monday as well as on Tuesday. Those two days are going to be the best opportunities to see some rain. We'll still have a couple of showers, thunderstorms around here Wednesday, Thursday. But again, right now, the best opportunity looks like Monday and Tuesday. 88 degrees today. Today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature makes it all the way up to 96 today. Don't forget, it's going to feel like it's well up into the hundreds, and it's also going to be somewhat on the breezy side today. Same thing tomorrow, 96 again. Then we start to transition into more clouds on Sunday in the afternoon, 93. Clouds going to help to hold temperatures down, and now, and this is pretty much the consensus with a lot of long-range computer models, uh, we're looking at upper 80s around here, and decent rain chances, especially Monday and Tuesday. That is still astounding for the end of June. I know, middle of summer. And the average, by the way, the average triple digit, first uh, 100 here in town is right around the 30th. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, we haven't hit average yet as far as getting that first one. Don't but put those we, triple digits out into the we atmosphere. Can ignore <laughs> that statistic for a while, that <laughs> average if you that. want. Yep. That'd be nice. 2007, I keep saying that. We'll make you deal. You don't bring it up, we don't bring it up. We'll right. talk about it. Okay, deal? Steven, are you in on this? Okay, great. All right. Thank you, everybody. Go team. 523, about 78 degrees. Next in your morning spotlight, a big music star joins the animated animals in Sing 2, plus a Hollywood landmark is opening up again. Today in entertainment news, a music legend gets animated and a streaming series star gets personal. Plus, a Hollywood landmark reopens post-pandemic. Here, CNN's David Daniel with a Hollywood Minute. I thought I would love it. And I do, but it's not enough. It's okay. You can say it. Sarah Shahi stars in Sex Slash Life, which premieres today on Netflix as a wife and mother who can't stop thinking about her free-spirited past. Shahi says she had to play the character. I'm a mother of three kids. I was in a long-term relationship, and I just felt like a lot of these questions that she was questioning were ripped from the pages of my own heart. You know, it's like motherhood is complex. It's messy. You can be a super great mom, but then also question the decisions that you've made in your life and wonder who you are. And, you know, you can have a great relationship, but it can still not be enough. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth One of Hollywood's biggest attractions is back in business. The TCL Chinese Theater says its forecourt, site of hundreds of stars, handprints and footprints, normally gets more than six million visitors a year. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's 527 and 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, more lawsuits being filed as companies, universities take steps to force COVID-19 vaccine requirements. Plus a first look at Wendy's first plant-based burger that is rolling out in several cities soon. Ready to go home with a new pet this weekend. Mike visits with the San Antonio Humane Society coming up. And ahead on GMSA at 6, a local mom and pop fishing store offers a new shopping experience for customers. We're talking to the owner about what makes Alpha out Outdoor Alphas unique. Making headlines this morning, new questions about who can force you to get a COVID-19 vaccine, along with several new lawsuits filed against businesses and universities. It's going to be another hot one, 78 degrees now at 531. Mike lets us know about today's forecast and how we can have some relief in the weekend and next week. Well, here's a relief. We've made it to Friday. It is Ooh. June 25th, and we're going to try to make a deal with Mike Osterhage. 
Break it to us gently, please, Mike. Yes. About the heat and humidity. It's going to be hot and humid, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Rip the band off. Scared straight. <laughs> I don't know how much. <laughs> yeah, it's going to feel like it did yesterday, the day before that. We will have temperatures up in the uh, mid 90s. Although, you know, just to put it in perspective, so yesterday was 96 degrees. The normal high is uh, average high is 93, which, all right, three degrees above that, but that's not too bad. I mean, it has been in years past worse than that. We do have relief in sight, and that's also some very good news 78 degrees right now Newport remains very high we got a decent breeze right now out of the south at 15 miles per hour and we are going to have kind of breezy conditions throughout the day and yes we do have a heat index right now so you step outside stinson it feels like 86 degrees yeah, there's no easing into that <laughs> unless you just stay inside. Mold is on the uh, the low side from yesterday's reading and throughout the day we'll make it up to uh, 88 at noon. 96 high temperature today, of course, once again, it's going to feel like it's well up into the uh, the low hundreds going into the weekend. We have more of this tomorrow, 96 degrees, but Sunday 93 and we're going to have some more clouds out here. And also a small chance for a couple of showers later in the day, especially off to the east, one or two of them, and then better rain chances going into next week. And boy, wait do you see some of the temperatures, the high temperatures for next week. It's almost unbelievable this time of year. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is the latest on the highways and byways, sir? A pretty quiet morning so far, Mike. We are taking a look at TransGuide. Things are moving pretty smoothly so far for this Friday morning. Let's go ahead and jump to TransGuide right now and take a look here at the wall again nice and smooth morning here at i10 days of vala people getting out on the roads perfect time to head out a little bit earlier maybe grab that cup of coffee before you head to work or anywhere else you need to be this morning but again smooth so far however we do have one crash that did pop up in our system this one right up on 281 northbound right at bulverde not causing as many issues this again this is heading up towards that area but we have not seen any delays right now we are watching that very closely but be cautious because we know 281 is a pretty Pretty dark area and there is a lot of construction that has gone out there in the last few days so just be a little cautious heading out in that area uh, other than that we've also spotted a stall that came up in our system here off us 90 eastbound right at loop 1604 as uh, you know 90 had a lot of issues earlier this morning this stall just adding to that uh, other layer of issues but right now it doesn't look like it's causing any other problems and things are running pretty smoothly so far and let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times right now we got uh, 22 minutes coming in from lavernia on 87 coming in from floodisville on 37 we got 28 minutes and Pleasanton. Things are looking pleasant. 28 minutes coming into the downtown San Antonio area. Bringing it back here to Transguide one last time. Again, smooth morning so far, but we are watching the roads closely this morning. Mark Sarah. An update to late breaking news now. Gunshots have brought an overnight celebration to an end. San Antonio police say the home where it happened is in the 900 block of Southwest 30 Street. 36th Street is now a crime scene. And two people have suffered gunshot wounds in what may have been an accidental shooting. Our Katrina Weber is there live. Katrina, earlier you mentioned there are two different scenes related to this. Well, that is true well, the scene here at this house where police are searching and also out on Highway 90 at Zarzamora. That is where they uh, did catch up with the man who they say pulled the trigger, possibly by accident. Now, what happened here, uh, there was a part, a celebration going on inside this home a little bit earlier. And then around 3.30 this morning, just before, that is when police say one man uh, pulled the trigger to a gun possibly while playing with it. Now, let me give you a look at the video so you can just see how many police responded here. There were dozens of them here when we arrived even just about a half hour ago. Uh, police say that they got the call here. Again, uh, they believe that an eight, a man about 18 or so was possibly playing with a weapon, uh, accidentally possibly pulled the trigger and then shot himself in the hand. That same bullet went through his hand and hit his friend in the belly who was sitting next to him. The friend was taken to the hospital by ambulance uh, in what police say, uh, what he suffered what police say may be a life-threatening injury. The person with the gun, meanwhile, took off in a car heading to the hospital on his own, but then he stopped on the highway and called police. They believe he might have panicked after seeing all the blood. Called police, that is where they found him. Uh, and so he also is being treated. Detectives are here going through the house very carefully. They have a canine unit with them uh, looking for evidence and they are trying to just uh, see if everything here adds up and determine whether or not there should be charges filed in this case. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Now the latest out of South Florida and the massive building collapse near Miami right now about 100 people are still unaccounted for. I'm hopeful, but reality is when we look at the rubble across the street, um, you know, it's possible that uh, there may not be any survivors or, or many, but I remain hopeful. Uh, we have to stay hopeful at this point. Fire teams in Surfside have worked through the night in the hope of finding survivors. At this time, only one death has been reported, but officials fear the number will skyrocket as they dig into the rubble. The 12-story building drew people from around the world. South American officials say 22 people from four countries are missing. Israel reporting 20 missing citizens. This is a story we'll continue to follow throughout the morning and look for the latest coming up on Good Morning America beginning at 7 a.m. Well, you've heard it over and over again. Get vaccinated against COVID. Health experts say people who don't are putting themselves and others at risk. As CNN's Britt Conroy reports, now it could mean losing a job or getting barred from school. The science is clear. If you're vaccinated, you're safe. The vaccination push continues at all levels. Some businesses are requiring it for people going back to the office, including Morgan Stanley. And in December, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission determined that's legal. States can also require people to get vaccinated, at least based on legal precedent from 1905. Cambridge, Massachusetts was fining people who refused to get a smallpox shot. An area pastor sued, but the court said a community had the right to protect itself. And that's what the city of San Francisco says it's doing. City employees will be required to get vaccinated. Hundreds of universities and colleges are also requiring students to get vaccinated before they head back to class. Indiana University is one of them. And now eight students from IU are suing. They're being stripped of their constitutional rights to uh, make medical treatment decisions for themselves. But an IU spokesperson says the university is confident it will prevail. Houston Methodist Hospital did after a judge dismissed a similar lawsuit brought by employees. Right now, more than 53% of people in the U.S. 12 and older are fully vaccinated. And as we face the Delta variant, which spreads more easily, health experts say every shot counts. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Well, former Vice President Mike Pence is defending his role in certifying the results of the 2020 election. He made the comments last night at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. Was Pence's strongest rebuttal to date of former President Donald Trump's continued insistence that he possessed the ability to overturn Democrat Joe Biden's victory, even though the Constitution granted him no such power. Pence also said there is, quote, almost no idea more un-American than the notion that any one person could choose the American president. Conan O'Brien has said goodbye to late night television. The final Conan show last night featured Will Ferrell, Jack Black and Homer Simpson. Conan got his start as a Simpson writer before hosting NBC's Late Night. Took over the Tonight Show from Jay Leno until NBC had Leno take the job back. Now, almost after three decades of nighttime hosting, O'Brien will start a weekly variety series on HBO Max. It's 539 and 78 degrees. So ahead, we're checking out a Wendy's, uh, their next plant-based burger being tested in select markets. Still 78 degrees at 539 this morning. Mike says the next couple of days, we're just gonna hang in there until that relief, the end of the weekend. He'll explain more about it when you come back. In your morning consumer headlines, Panera Bread is giving away a bagel to anyone who is vaccinated against coronavirus each day from July 2nd to July 4th. So if you're vaccinated, you could get up to three bagels at participating locations if you go all three days. Choices include sesame, chocolate chip, cinnamon swirl, Asiago cheese, but you will need to pay for spreads. Other restaurants have also done giveaways to promote COVID-19 vaccinations, including Krispy Kreme and Taco Bell. With more people vaccinated and capacity restrictions lifting everywhere, weddings are making a huge comeback this summer. According to the wedding plan website, The Knot, most couples who waited out the pandemic are setting a new date for this year that has the wedding industry scrambling to meet demand. The wedding industry, which typically employs 885,000 Americans, is also coming up out of the pandemic shorthanded. In addition to finding labor, the cost of some wedding essentials like flowers have doubled during the downtime. In another big change from tradition, when Fridays and Saturdays were always chosen as the ideal wedding dates, now just about any day will do.
Well, Wendy's is jumping on the plant-based burger bandwagon. The first food giant is testing its new spicy black bean burger in three cities. The test run starts Monday in Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, and Columbus, Ohio. The burger is a limited time item and sells for $5.79. The new Wendy's creation features a black bean patty seasoned with paprika and chipotle pepper. It's topped with crunchy chipotle jalapenos and a smoky chipotle sauce plus a piece of melted pepper jack cheese. So it's got a little kick to it. A little kick. I just started trying more plant-based burgers uh -huh. and food this week, so I'm going to have to give it a try. I'm leaning into it. I'm leaning into Apparently it. Apparently it's supposed to be healthy and stuff. R right. Yeah. How, how, how's it taste so far? Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so maybe we need the spice, right? <laughs> yeah, lots of spice. <laughs> 544, about 78 degrees. Well, we'll need a new furry friend to take home with you this weekend. We have a pet that needs a home at the San Antonio Humane Society. That's next. Well, it is kitty cat time. Oh, look at this little one. Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Boy, eyes like saucers, but this one's motor is going 90 to nothing. Oh, yes. This is sweet Britta. She is a two-month-old little baby. Don't chew in the microphone. I know. It's not a toy. <laughs> but did you know that this month is National Adopt-A-Cat Month? I did not. Yeah, so you can come on down and meet Britta and her sweet friends um, at the San Antonio Humane Society mm -hmm. and adopt a sweet little kitten yes, or cat. Indeed, and two, of course, mm -hmm. are about the same as one when it comes to little kitties. They can use the same litter box and they yes, keep each other occupied. Yes, absolutely. Everything is, is yes, fine. Yep. And don't forget, with uh, Fiesta winding down, they still have yes. these beautiful Fiesta medals that they you can uh, get for purchase. You can get them um, at our location off of Fredericksburg Road, or you can go to the Fiesta store and grab them there, too. Okay. They're really neat. They've got, we've got a puppy from El Rey Fido, and we have a sweet little cat, too. We'll head on One over there. For all of them. Again, 4804 Fredericksburg Road or 226 7461 is the number to call, and you can adopt the little kitties for National yeah. uh, cat, kit, cat and Kitten Month. Easy for me to <laughs> say. Adopt a Cat Month, yes. Or if you can't spit that out, adopt a dog. So anyway, <laughs> head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. And thank you. Encouraging the LGBTQ plus community to get vaccinated is one way Fiesta Youth is doing their part to get back to normal. Fiesta Youth is one of hundreds of local nonprofits that depend on big Fiesta events for funding throughout the year. After more than a year without those fundraisers, the group was finally able to put on their biggest event this past weekend and resume weekly in-person meetings. But in order to keep these gatherings going, they are encouraging more teens to get their COVID-19 vaccine. We've been celebrating each and every vaccination that the youths have been getting. We're going to throw a pajama party if we can get uh, 40 kids to uh, be vaccinated, fully vaccinated. So we're really excited about that, too. Fiesta Youth has been working in partnership with the Pride Center and Metro Health to provide vaccine opportunities. They are planning for a pop-up clinic in August before school starts. 549, I have to kind of look through a camera's uh, stand to see the uh, trans guide cameras and I don't want to jinx it, but right now I'm not seeing anything over it's here. looking good, Stephen. Yes, we will keep our fingers crossed and yes, you're right, but things are looking pretty good so far. We do have uh, that abandoned vehicle that's been out there, Loop 410 at Jackson Keller, but overall it's been a pretty quiet morning and we're watching the roads pretty closely. Let's go ahead and jump to trans guide and show you what we're looking at right now. Uh, Loop 1604 at Kyle Seal Parkway, I-35 at FM 1103, pretty good right now, so we know that's a pretty usual busy spot right now, but again, things are pretty smooth, so let's go and jump to uh, though some delays that we're seeing or slowdowns, I should say, right here at Loop 410 southbound right at Seguin Road. Uh, watching this pretty closely, nothing's coming up on TxDOT's pages or any of the fire pages right now. Just right now, we're seeing a slowdown in that area. We're going to be keeping a close eye on that as more people are going to be getting out on the roadways for this Friday morning. But so far, it's overall a pretty green morning here. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some closures that we can expect over the weekend. We told you about this one yesterday off Alamo Ranch Parkway. What's going to be going on there? It's going to be some placement of bridge beams and it's going to be a full closure guys it's going to be happening right at Westwood Loop intersection from 10 in the evening to 5 in the morning that starts today should wrap up by the 28th but something to be in mind for if you live out over on the far west side of the county but taking a look one last look here at Transguide pretty smooth morning so far and I do want to say really quick uh, I met Britta the other day Mike and uh, she, loud purr but it's just so smooth it's very calm. It's like AS, what does it call ASMR, where, where you hear something and it's just very calming to you? 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what I mean, it sounded whatever, like. Yeah. A little so kitten. That was a smooth you know, engine that, running, huh? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Just, it's it's like those uh, the sound machines and things like yeah. that. Oh, the white noise machines? Yeah, white noise machines. Your there you go. Like that. You just keep a kitten close and you don't need a fancy noise machine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Love cats. There you go. Anyway, uh, beautiful. We've been talking about all the uh, great moon pictures, and this is a really cool looking picture over there. The strawberry moon as it was rising. It's going to be another beautiful moonrise tonight and sunrise not so pretty this morning with all the uh, clouds hanging around. And now don't be surprised if there is just a stray little sprinkle around this morning. Yesterday, uh, right around what, nine o'clock ish, something like that, driving around, there were one or two little drops and it's just because all this moisture come getting pumped on in here. Now we do have now look at the bone dry air out there in the uh, desert southwest and then we do have fairly dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. Which which means we're going to have a, a good deal of sunshine mixed in with some of the clouds once we get rid of the morning clouds. And also there is the big clockwise rotation. So that's the high which is sitting on top of us. All right, quick check of the tropics. Yesterday, Hurricane Center was looking at a little batch of clouds right there just off the Lesser Antilles. And now that's not even showing up in their the radar at all. And then further off to the east, there is another little disturbance that right here, just off the coast of Africa, south of the Cape Verde Islands, that has a very small chance of any sort of development. But again, we're going to continue to watch as the hurricane season rolls on. Usually get all of these, you know, kind of the, the production line with all those disturbances and those waves coming off Africa and moving across the Atlantic Ocean. But there's nothing out there right now except for that little disturbance out there. For us, we are going to be getting these little waves coming in off the Gulf of Mexico once we get into the next couple of days. That high, which is sitting on top of us, is going to sort of move out of the way, and that opens us up again for these we call them kind of easterly waves because they come from east to west and that'll be just enough of a disturbance. We don't have the high plunk down on top of us to keep a lid on things. Plus this trough is kind of building. So we've got a lot of different ingredients coming together to give us decent rain chances going into especially Monday and Tuesday of next week, as well as some lower temperatures around here. So it's very encouraging as far as the, the forecast is concerned. Today, 88 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today, well up into the uh, mid 90s, 96. Of course, heat index is going to be well up there into the uh, triple digits. It's also going to be breezy today. Tomorrow, about the same situation, start to transition Sunday, small chance for some rain, better chance of rain, the best chance of the uh, long range forecast is going to be Monday and Tuesday. And look at those high temperatures. 89 degrees as it's looking right now, we will start the month of July at 89. Who'd have thunk it? You know, it's, we didn't thunk it. No. Or think it. Yeah. Glad you thunk it. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Thank you, Mike. 554, about 78 degrees. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, six, three, one, fireball one, daily four, nine, nine, eight, four, fireball eight. Cash five numbers, five, seven, 19, 29, 33, Texas two step eight, 25, 27, 31, bonus ball nine. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA helping local veterans in need. The essential items the Minority Veterans America is asking for this weekend. Plus, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is set to be sentenced today. Details on how many years he could face in prison. And the latest on the condominium collapse in South Florida. What we know about the people missing in efforts to find them overnight. Checking Transguide right now. See how things are looking out there. We've got a, quite a few more cars on the road here as we approach the top of the hour. Looking at long Loop 410 in several spots, a stalled vehicle near Jackson Keller. Are there any other spots you might need to avoid to get around? Stephen Cavazos has details coming up in a matter of minutes. We'll be right back. An overnight celebration here on the west side takes a violent turn. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police investigating after two people were shot in this home. I'll tell you more about it. In a major announcement, President Biden says he's reached a bipartisan deal on infrastructure. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, we'll take a look at what's in the deal and what was left out. The latest on the condo collapse in South Florida that has left nearly 100 people still unaccounted for. 77 degrees. We've dropped a degree at 6 a.m. this morning, but it's going to be a hot one, according to Mike. 
Is there some relief in sight? He'll explain in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. We made it to Friday. It is June 25th. Sarah Costa back in this morning. Good to have you here. Good to be here and happy Friday. I, I love Fridays. I know, I know it's really technically not my Friday, but I'm not allowed to talk about that according to you because you like, don't be a Debbie Downer. No, it's fine. It's just I, I feel bad for you. I mean, you know, part no, of your you job know, is working the weekends, I love, right? I love working the weekends. Right. I love my weekend crew. I just, we don't like to rub it in since your oh. week is only halfway <laughs> over. So we'll only rub it in a little bit, right, Mike Oster H? Do we need couples therapy for you too? What's uh, going on over there? So sweet. anyway, um, <laughs> happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is uh, warm and humid out there this morning, and it's going to be another hot one, kind of a repeat of the past few days, but we do have changes in sight. There's a little bit of a breeze this morning, kind of helps out with some of that humidity. 12 mile per hour winds there at the airport. It is going to be leaning toward the breezier side later on today. Mold is low from yesterday's count. Of course, the updated reading is going to be coming out in about, uh, oh, say an hour, hour and a half or so. And temperatures pretty much steady at this point. And and we've got our morning clouds. We'll see more sunshine mixed in. We'll make it up into the upper 80s today at noon and then top off at 96. We hit 95 yesterday. The normal average is 93, so we are definitely going to be on the warm side of things. But of course, you got to factor in the humidity, and that number is going to be getting up to uh, the low hundreds later on today. More of the same tomorrow, but then we are going to be seeing a nice change coming in here starting Sunday and then especially going into next week, and that does include rain and lower temperatures. What a nice forecast for the middle of summer. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cabasos. What's going on? Uh, just the construction, Mike, really, and some slowdowns that we're spot spotting because of that construction. We showed you uh, the map, or Loop 410, I should say, where we did have some slowdowns here, and we want to show you uh, our friends at Transguide working to get us this shot here. You can see that we do have, uh, looks like a lane that is closed there right now. Traffic moving, but moving a little bit slowly. Uh, this is all due to construction. Let's go ahead and jump to our maps and see where that slowdown is exactly. Loop 410 southbound right at Seguin Road. Traffic slowing down to 10 miles per hour, so it is moving. Moving, but not moving very fast right now, and that's okay because we do have our construction workers out there, so just be cautious of them. Uh, but taking a look around San Antonio and the outlying areas, things are looking good right now. Nothing too major to report. Keeping our fingers crossed, it heads, it stays that way as we head into the weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look here at our inbound times. Uh, if you are coming in from Lytle on 35, we have 17 minutes. Coming in from 90 and Castroville, we have a 19-minute commute time. 24 minutes coming in from Bernie uh, on I-10 to the downtown San Antonio area. Again, relatively quiet morning so far as we get this Friday started, but jumping back to Transguide, uh, looks like it is slowing down a little pretty bad over there at Loop 410 at FM 78. Pack your patience with that coffee. Mark, Sarah? San Antonio police say alcohol and a gun have added up to trouble at a West Side home. Two people suffered gunshot wounds during what had been an overnight celebration. Katrina Weber is live where it happened in the 900 block of Southwest 36th Street. And Katrina, we know that one of them was seriously hurt. Is there any update on him? Well, the last word we had is that he was critical with what police described as a life-threatening wound to his belly. The other man was shot in the hand, and police believe that he's the one who pulled the trigger. They say it happened during a house party here overnight, but it seems not everyone stuck around until officers showed up. They found the suspected shooter in his car out on Highway 90 near Zarzamora. Police say he was trying to drive himself to a hospital, but then panicked, pulling over and calling 911. Now they say he shot himself in the hand, possibly while playing with a gun inside the home. The same bullet then hit his friend in the belly. That man taken to a hospital by ambulance. Police have been here at the home since shortly before 3.30 this morning. They say they found about 10 people here in all when they arrived, some of whom had been drinking. The detectives plan to interview them about what happened to determine if any charges should be filed. But both of the men who were shot are about 18 years old, according to police. One of the guests told me that they were all in here just celebrating summer when things went horribly wrong. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, New Braunfels police say a kidnapping claim at a children's summer camp never happened. Officers say one of the counselors at Fisher Park claimed a man and woman tried to kidnap two children earlier this month. Say the counselor claimed the pair had printed fake parent pickup forms and waited in the car pickup line to abduct two kids. Well, police investigated the alleged incident for weeks and they say it never happened. 
Right now, it's unclear why the claims were made. We're told the camp counselor is no longer employed by the city. The urgent round the clock search for survivors continues of the rubble of that building collapse in South Florida. At least three people have died and nearly 100 people remain unaccounted for. ABC's Morgan Norwood is at the scene in Surfside, Florida. This morning, authorities desperately searching for answers in these layers of concrete as families like Saria Cohen and her daughter anxiously wait for word about their loved ones. My 12 year old daughter, who's absolutely like beyond in shock, she's so close to, to her father. Who's going to survive that rubble? This beachfront condo building, a disaster zone. I have never seen so many ambulances and police in my life all at once. Surveillance video shows the horrifying moments parts of the 12 story building split in two, collapsing to the ground early Thursday morning. <coughs> Many residents jolted awake by the thunderous crash. You know, we just ran for our lives and it was nothing but just white, thick cloud of dust. Others never made it out and so many still unaccounted for. Nicholas Fernandez says three of his friends were staying in his condo, telling ABC's Victor Oquindo he's heard nothing from them. And you've tried calling them, you're trying everything, you can't get a hold of them. Don't stop, don't stop with my family. And just with the, like, you know, ha having like at least a hope of like maybe the rescue team will hear the cell phone and they will have a clue. And now the big question, how this happened? Why did this building that stood for 40 years uh, suddenly collapse? Were there extraordinary loads? Uh, were there deterioration mechanisms going on? Were there changes to the structure made? They'll be looking in the field at the orientation of the debris, the way that it's broken, the way that the parts are stacked up against each other. The investigation into the cause could take weeks, even months, but for now, the focus remains on the search. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Surfside, Florida. Well, back here in Texas, Colleen police say they've arrested the mass shooting suspect Austin authorities have been searching for. 19-year-old DeAndre White was taken into custody yesterday afternoon in Colleen. His arrest comes after Austin police said they had dropped charges against the two people already in custody, announcing they were instead searching for White. White is set to be charged with murder in connection with the 6th Street shooting that left one man dead and 13 others injured. It's unclear at this time what other charges he may face. Here in San Antonio, 46 page report by the Committee on Emergency Preparedness found that SAW, CPS Energy and the city of San Antonio itself did not properly communicate with the public or even among themselves during the February winter storm. The report says CPS Energy did not notify SAWs about the rotating power outages before they happened. The city's emergency operations center didn't know about the boil water notice until it was issued. The report also said if there was another major winter storm here in Texas, we would experience similar power outages because of the way ERCOT manages the state's energy grid. The committee made more than 50 recommendations. CPS Energy is also reevaluating its strategies for purchasing natural gas, which led them to spend at least $685 million during that week. Now to the latest on President Joe Biden's infrastructure plan. This morning, the developments are raising questions about the future of jobs, roads, bridges, and the Internet. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with more about the deal. Good morning. The question moving forward is, does the president have enough votes for this deal? Democrats are confident. Republicans are beginning to voice opposition. President Biden standing side by side with a bipartisan group of senators, announcing a rare achievement in this polarized country. We have a deal. After several meetings, Democrats and Republicans struck an agreement on a $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan. The bill calls for $579 billion worth of new spending in areas like transportation, roads, bridges, and broadband for rural communities, including the largest investment in the rail system since the formation of Amtrak. None of us got what we all that we wanted. I clearly didn't get all I wanted. In order for this deal to happen, both sides compromised on what they wanted in the bill. What both sides agreed on? A promise not to raise taxes. But not everyone seemed pleased with the deal. Some Democrats feel it doesn't go far enough. I think it is way too small, paltry, pitiful. The agreement fails to address climate change, as well as human infrastructure, like childcare and education, something President Biden says he'll push for in a separate bill with just Democrats. Republicans responding, accusing the president of doublespeak. An expression of bipartisanship and then an ultimate 
on behalf, and then an ultimatum on behalf of your left wing base. Now, taxes will not be raised to pay for this. Instead, the deal calls for reforming the IRS to close tax gaps and redirecting unused emergency COVID relief funds. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Vice President Kamala Harris set to visit El Paso today. There are no exact details on an agenda for the visit, but according to staff, the goal is to, quote, address the root causes of migration from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. The Vice President was just in Guatemala and Mexico earlier this month on her first trip overseas since taking office. 611 and 77 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a local tackle shop offers a unique experience for some customers. We'll tell you all about outdoor alphas. Plus, helping local veterans in need after the break, when and where you can donate to the Minority Veterans of America and the Pink Berets this weekend. Outside with live cam, let's check on your Friday morning sunrise. We have quite a few clouds. Mike's forecast still to come. Minority Veterans of America and the Pink Berets are joining forces to help all the veterans of four community this weekend. The MVA is hosting a supply drop to help veterans in need of essential items. Those items include non-perishables, fruits and vegetables, hygiene kits, and even pet food. CEO and founder of the Pink Berets, Stephanie Gatta, says the supplies will be for any veteran, regardless of their discharge status or length of service. Knowing that we can open up this opportunity to veterans who are struggling or to families that are struggling to put a sufficient amount of food on the table or to provide the necessary necessities that the families need, um, I think that this is a great opportunity for them to just have some sort of relief. The event is happening tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Texas A&M San Antonio at Patriots Casa. You need to register ahead of time on the Minority Veterans website of America. Anyone who watches GMSA on a regular basis knows I love fishing, especially for my kayak. After really getting into the sport three years ago, I made a lot of friends and connections and caught quite a few fish. I've decided to share some fishing related stories this summer here on GMSA and GMSA at nine. This week, part one about an east side tackle shop called Outdoor Alphas. Now, I'd always heard about this mom and pop store off of Rigsby, but this was my first visit and I take you along to meet owner Sam Garza. He and his family started by selling used fishing gear out of their house. They then decided to open a store in a storage unit. So how does this tiny local tackle shop compete with the big boys like Bass Pro and Academy? We offer um, expertise in actually fishing. Of course, a lot of people know when they go to Academy, a lot of people don't know anything about fishing. They just out there to sell gear. Um, we offer the expertise in all of our gear being actually used. And later this morning on GMSA at 9, you'll hear about some of the unique tackle and gear they carry, including some revolutionary lures from Japan. You also meet a local fisherman who was on the store's pro staff, and we find out how they came up with that name, Outdoor Alphas. Look for my full story coming up today on GMSA at 9. So happy you're doing this series. Me too. We've got four or five of them planned. I'm learning a lot, too. Awesome. All right, let's learn about the traffic, Stephen. Hey, pretty cool stuff, Mark. Well, you know, we are looking at some improvements here off Loop 410 at FM 78 is a view from Transguide. You can see that there is a lot of traffic that is building up there. That's because some construction has been wrapping up, but of course it is leading to some major delays. Let's go ahead and take a look right now at our maps and see what those look like at this hour. This is on Loop 410 southbound right at Seguin Road. You can see that traffic has slowed down to 12 miles per hour right now, so it is moving, but moving a little slow. So just be prepared for those slowdowns. Now, another slowdown we can possibly expect here is off Loop 410 southbound right at Valley High Drive. We have a stalled vehicle and that indicator in the background means that at least one lane has been closed because of that stalled vehicle. Again, this is right here. Loop 410 southbound at Valley High Drive, but bringing it back here to Loop 410 at FM 78. Things are moving. Construction should be wrapping up soon, so we're hoping traffic picks up. That's Guys, great news right now. Ksat.com. We have a web extra Sam Garza from out there. Alpha is talking about fishing lures that he knows work for beginners right here in mm. the San Antonio area. That's what so I look, need. Look yeah. for that on ksat.com. And Mike? plus, Mark loves doing that because he takes the day off and goes fishing, too. So. <laughs> right. Win-win. The win-win is, is, is doing that for ksat and getting paid. <laughs> Mama didn't raise no dummy over there. That's so. right. <laughs> no, that, that's really cool. And, and again, hearing it from, you know, the folks that do it. Exactly. And they got all those little tips and everything. More to come. That's neat. I, and I didn't even know that shop existed over there. So. Me neither.
Cool series. All right, uh, step outside this morning and yep, feels like it did about every morning this week. Temperatures are four or five degrees above normal. Everybody's mid upper 70s right now. And yeah, warm and humid, partly cloudy today. Again, heat index 105, same thing tomorrow. But then we are going to see that's not a typo upper 80s and a decent chance for showers and thunderstorms going into uh, well starting Sunday, although we'll still be low 90s uh, drop down a little bit, but going into next week. Yeah, we've got a pretty good chance as it's looking right now for some rain Again, not everybody's going to be seeing rain, but uh, yeah, there's a, a decent shot at it and those lower temperatures. Beautiful and I love the caption. Just a peaceful sunset. And if you just OK, imagine being out on the water fishing and that sunset. I just got a big smile over there from him. So yeah, that'd be very nice. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, the sunrise this morning, not so pretty because we've got a lot of clouds around here and uh, we'll keep morning clouds around more sunshine later on today. Of course, computer models have, you know, one or two little sprinkles. Don't be surprised. I yesterday morning uh, right around what nine o'clock. There were like one or two little sprinkles out there just because there's so much humidity and it keeps getting pumped on in here. Uh, there's no you know weather systems or anything like that. We are going to see more clouds again then tomorrow morning and then more sunshine in the afternoon. Then notice how some of these clouds started to work their way in from the east. That's what's going to bring a chance of rain by about Sunday. Um, so we'll start to see one or two of those showers, maybe a thunderstorm, especially off to the east late Sunday uh, afternoon and then going into the evening hours. The overall picture, obviously a lot going on up to the north of us, but there's you can sort of make out that clockwise rotation. That's the high, which is uh, kind of dominating things. But what will happen is that's going to start to kind of head off to the east a little bit more. We get into the flow coming in off of the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Little waves come in here, little disturbances that combined with a very unusual very rare this time of year a trough that's cutting through the middle part of the country. Those two things are going to help us with lower temperatures and also those improving rain chances going into next week. So the forecast today 88 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature well up into the mid 90s going for 96 heat index in the hundreds kind of breezy today. Same thing tomorrow. Then we start to see that that change on Sunday lower 90s down a few degrees, although that is about normal and then upper 80s next week. The best chance of all those days with rain graphics on there, rain symbols uh, Monday and Tuesday would be the, the best chance to see some showers and thunderstorms. Again, it won't be everywhere or constantly, but not bad. A lot more clouds, upper 80s. Okay, thank you, Mike. 621, about 77 degrees. Well, the Pentagon is releasing a report today on what's called an unidentified aerial phenomena. We'll have the details next in today's GMA First Look. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients to support immune health. From prom dresses to workouts and new adventures. You hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. Imagine a visibly healthier pet in 28 days. Purina One, natural ingredients in powerful combinations for radiant coats, sparkling eyes. Purina One, one visibly healthy pet. Try these new Purina One True Instinct formulas for dogs. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the biggest question in the galaxy. Is the truth out there? And when will we know? They're the declassified videos capturing the mysterious sightings. Something flying incredibly fast. And now, according to a U.S. official, the long-awaited intelligence report on unexplained aerial phenomena is expected to be sent to Congress later today. Retired Navy Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich, a veteran combat pilot, says she spotted a UAP in 2004 near San Diego. As a military officer, we're always conditioned to think friend or foe. There is a concern about national security, something in our 
immediate vicinity when we were conducting military exercises. So what's in the report? We'll have much more coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. There is an overflow of felines over at Animal Care Services. That's why they're offering an awesome adoption special. Starting tomorrow, you can go to the shelter to take home a kitten or cat for just $5. ACS is encouraging everyone to adopt a pair of the feline so they can keep each other company. If you're not sure about adoption, the shelter is also offering foster to adopt options for approved temporary pet parents. Adopted pets receive vaccination, sterilization, deworming, and a registered microchip. For more information on the adoption process, just head to saacs.net. Right now, it is 626, about 77 degrees. Raising kids can be tough for many parents. Still ahead in our next half hour, the new initiative that's helping build stronger families. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin will learn his fate today. Details on how many years in prison he could face for the murder of George Floyd. There was a house party here overnight, but the celebration is over. It ended with gunshots. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Two men suffered gunshot wounds, but I'll tell you why police say no one may face charges. Coming up. And we're following that deadly building collapse here in Florida, the very latest on that desperate search. And outside with live cam, morning clouds, ton of humidity, but Mike says, hang on, we might actually end the month on a positive note. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, June 25th. I'm hanging on. I'm waiting for that positive <laughs> note. I'm so happy to be here. Happy Friday, guys. And Mike, you know, just we have what two two more days, three more days of this ex two. crazy heat today. Tomorrow uh, we'll drop down a little bit on Sunday. More clouds out there and small chance for a couple of showers on Sunday. And then, yeah, things are definitely looking very encouraging for next week, not only for some rain chances, but also for some lower temperatures this morning. Now well, it's almost like deja vu all over again, like it was yesterday, like it was the day before. We have temperatures in the upper 70s right now, and the humidity is still pretty high. Decent little breeze out of the uh, south, southeast, about to 10, 15 miles per hour on average. 83 is what it feels like at Stinson right now. 82 Castorville, 83 up the road at Canyon Lake, and low amount of mold. Updated count is going to come out in about uh, oh, half hour, 45 minutes or so. And uh, throughout the rest of today, again, Again, warm and humid this morning. Later on this afternoon, we will have once again partly cloudy skies. Heat index getting well up into the 100s. Same thing tomorrow. The hot start. Then we start to see the changes on Sunday, and it's going to be subtle changes, but you know, a few degrees down is very nice. And one or two showers, especially off to the east on Sunday. Then we go into next week, and yeah, upper 80s. A lot of agreement widespread with computer models, upper 80s, and some decent rain chances. We'll get it all sorted out in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big out there, sir? Well, you know it's sorting itself out, Mike. It's going to be the traffic out off Loop 410 at FM 78. It was a lot of delays that we were spotting, slowdowns, but take a look right now. Things are picking up, and things are picking up nice and smooth right now. Now, there was some construction that, again, you can still see we still have some folks out there right now, but it uh, looks like that is wrapping up and traffic is picking up. Take a look. Loop 410 south, southbound that is at Seguin. We saw a lot of red a little bit earlier, but now that's uh, traffic's moving to 29 miles per hour at this moment. So Good improvements there uh, after seeing some construction. Overall, pretty quiet morning here, though, around, in and around the Alamo City. Taking a look at our inbound times one last time. Coming in from I-10 from Bernie, we got 24 minutes. 281 from Bulverde, we have 25 minutes. And if you're coming in from New Braunfels on 35, we have 25 minutes for you to the downtown San Antonio area. But again, pretty quiet morning here in the San Antonio and outline areas. Loop 410 at FM 78 one last time. Traffic improving. Mark Sarah. Thanks, Stephen. San Antonio police say a man possibly playing with a gun is to blame for injuries to two people, including himself. The shootings happened overnight during a house party in the 900 block of Southwest 36th Street. Katrina Weber is there live. And Katrina, it looks like police have just about cleared out. Have they made a decision about whether to file charges? Yeah, they have cleared out. Uh, if they've made a decision, they have not shared any of that with us yet. If you look, this is a very different scene from what we had earlier, where we had more than a dozen police cars lining this street. They showed up in mass for what they expected to be a crowd of people who were attending the party. But one person noticeably was missing. That was the man who they say pulled the trigger. He actually tried to drive himself to a hospital. 
but police say he ended up pulling over on Highway 90 near Zarzamora and calling 911 for help. He was bleeding from a gunshot wound to his hand. Police say that man shot himself, possibly while playing with a gun. That same bullet then went through his hand, hitting his friend in his belly. The friend suffered what police call a life-threatening wound, both of them taken to a hospital. The police say several of the people who were at this party, uh, who they questioned, may have been drinking. Many of them appeared to be teenagers, but of those involved, of those who were involved in the shooting, police say, were both about 18 years old. And again, still waiting to hear if they plan to pursue any charges against anyone. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. This morning, the urgent round the clock search for survivors continues in the rubble of that building collapse in South Florida. At least three people have died and nearly 100 people remain unaccounted for. ABC's Morgan Norwood is at the scene in Surfside, Florida. This morning, authorities desperately searching for answers in these layers of concrete as families like Saria Cohen and her daughter anxiously wait for word about their loved ones. My 12 year old daughter, who's absolutely like the odds of shock, she's so close to, to her father. Who's going to survive that rubble? This beachfront condo building, a disaster zone. I have never seen so many ambulances and police in my life all at once. Surveillance video shows the horrifying moments. Parts of the 12 story building split in two, collapsing to the ground early Thursday morning. <coughs> Many residents jolted awake by the thunderous crash. You know, we just ran for our lives and it was nothing but just white, thick cloud of dust. Others never made it out and so many still unaccounted for. Nicholas Fernandez says three of his friends were staying in his condo, telling ABC's Victor Oquindo he's heard nothing from them. And you've tried calling them, you're trying everything, you non can't get a hold of them. Don't stop. Don't stop with my family. And just with the, like, you know, ha having like at least a hope of like maybe the rescue team will hear the cell phone and they will have a clue. And now the big question, how this happened? Why did this building that stood for 40 years uh, suddenly collapse? Were there extraordinary loads? Uh, were there deterioration mechanisms going on? Were there changes to the structure made? They'll be looking in the field at the orientation of the debris, the way that it's broken, the way that the parts are stacked up against each other. The investigation into the cause could take weeks, even months, but for now, the focus remains on the search. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Surfside, Florida. Of course, more coming up at 7 on Good Morning America. Other headlines this morning, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is set to be sentenced this afternoon. Chauvin convicted on April 20th on all three counts for the death of George Floyd. He could be sentenced up to 40 years in prison. The prosecution asking for 30. Chauvin's attorneys are seeking probation. The sentences are expected to run concurrently. U.S. officials say about 650 U.S. troops are expected to stay in Afghanistan to provide security for the American diplomatic presence after the Pentagon completes its military withdrawal. This is set to be done in the next two weeks. Several hundred additional American forces will remain at Kabul airport until September to assist Turkish troops providing that security. Officials say that say there will be a temporary move until a more formal Turkey-led force is in place. And speaking of the military, according to a new study from Brown University, more veterans have died from suicide than in combat. They are calling it a suicide epidemic. The report shows over 30,000 service members and veterans have died by suicide. That's compared to just over 7,000 killed following 9-11. Now groups like Warriors Heart are working to find answers and offering resources to help. We have more information on KSAT.com. The Centers for Disease Control Prevention concerned that one in 10 Americans are skipping their second COVID shot. That's about 15 million Americans who could now be left vulnerable to the more transmissible Delta variant of COVID-19. Adults under the age of 30 are most likely to have missed that second dose. The White House now focusing on young adults as a renewed focus of its ongoing strategy to fight the pandemic. Right now it is 638, about 77 degrees. Helping moms and dads become better parents up next on GMSA, how the St. Jude Children's House home is making it possible. Faces of Fiesta is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, my name is Hannah Elizabeth Backey and I'm Princess of the Order of the Alamo. Viva Fiesta! Meet this year's Princess of the Order of the Alamo. 
for Hannah, this year's Fiesta Royal celebrations is a family affair. Her uncle is the current King Antonio the 98th. Just from what we've done so far, it has been a blast getting to be with him and Liza and them letting us ride along with them. So I'm so excited to share this year with him. As an eighth generation Texan, Hannah is honored to be part of the oldest royal court of Fiesta. I love how it celebrates the independence of Texas and it's so much fun for our community and the city of San Antonio. And for those with a sweet tooth, Hannah's passion is right up your alley. I went to culinary school and I'm currently working as a pastry chef. So that's my passion, but I also love the outdoors, um, hunting and fishing with my family. Her coronation was an evening of excitement and pageantry and one she'll remember for a lifetime. But the one fiesta event she enjoys? The chariata is my favorite just because it's at the very end and it's a Sunday. So right when you think it's over, it's actually not over. Everyone really just gets to kind of relax and have fun and watch just this amazing tradition that San Antonio holds with the rodeo. St. Jude Children's Home has a new home. They're now known as the SJRC. Their mission hasn't changed. They still take care of children and have just added another element. They have started a new department that helps adults. Their goal, helping moms and dads become better parents. As our David Sears tells us, it's all about support and education when it comes to raising children. We want it to support families in an effort to help establish healthy relationships, healthy families, grow healthy children, in an effort to prevent child abuse before they end up in the foster care system or somewhere else. That is why the SJRC started their Parenting Prevention Department. Having support is everything. Um, it takes a village. And more and more men are becoming members of that village. The number of fathers and father figures involved in their children's lives has increased over the years. And for some, the need for assistance and direction has also increased. The role of the father has continued to change and there's somewhat of a science behind being a good dad. And one of the first things you wanna to do to be a good father is build a solid foundation with your kids. We want to build a strong bond with, with our child um, and, and that starts with a good base, you know, that, that's what we're looking for. Uh, there are times where it's going to sway, there's times where that relationship's going to get a little rickety, there are times where that relationship may even crumble, um, but the important thing is, is rebuilding it, uh, making sure it's strong, making sure the foundation is always there. Joel Gonzalez is leading the summer series Science of Being a Dad. He teaches men how to build that base using everyday items, wooden blocks, plastic tiles, standard stuff. The Fatherhood Initiative actually started earlier in the summer. Married and dedicated dad Eric Loyola took his two-year-old son Oliver to the father-child fishing experience. There was bonding and learning. Definitely learn uh, patience is key. Uh, he's two and a half going, going on three and uh, he, he was involved with the actual fishing, holding the fishing rod for a good five seconds. Patience is one of the building blocks. Loyola is taking advantage of the fatherhood initiative. It's always a, a, a learning process, it, it never stops, but we just want to, uh, I personally want to get started on the right foot, want to make sure that I have more uh, wins and then stumbles, if you will. That's the reason SJRC started the fatherhood initiative. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Friday morning time check 646. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos with your traffic authority before you head out the door. Stephen. Hey, you know, things are looking pretty good right now, Mark and Sarah, as we drive off into the weekend. No major problems right now. In fact, we've seen a lot of resolution. Let's go ahead and jump to Transguide right now. As you can see, I-10 at Day Zavala. Things are running pretty smoothly as we get more drivers out on the road, but we did have a slowdown that has since improved quite dramatically here. Look at Loop 410 southbound at Seguin Road. When we last talked to you guys, uh, traffic was slowing down to a little bit about 29 miles per hour there now jumping back up to 60. So there was construction going on out there that has since wrapped and people can now get their way through there uh, pretty smoothly though. And the same goes for around the Alamo City and outlying areas as well. Pretty smooth right now. And if one of the places you're going to be heading to this morning is the gas station, let's go ahead and take a look at those gas prices one last time. AAA reporting that here in Bear County, we have 264 as the average gas price around the state. We're looking at 276 and around the country 308. So right now, good time to head to the gas station and fill up the car before you head to your destination, but 
1604 at Bandera or Bandera at 1604 at Bandera Road. People getting out on the roadways. Things looking pretty smoothly, but we'll be watching it closely. Uh, Mike Ostrange, what were they calling last night's moon? A rose? Strawberry. Moon? Strawberry. Strawberry, yeah. Strawberry yeah I, that's... I, I don't remember them naming all these before. Yeah. I'm waiting for the <laughs> Nerf moon. No, and this, was, yeah. this is all the, the uh, Lord Folk Old Farmer's Almanac, and uh -huh. it goes back uh, from a lot of the any Native American names. Okay. Because it has to do with, you know, when the strawberries were, were ripened up. It was also called the, the hot moon. Well, it just seems like every year now we're learning more and more about what these are called oh. in legend well, in legend all these, all these great names yes of course there's you know like the uh at sometimes the full buck moon is one of them when the you know the deer and their antlers were mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they'll be sponsored soon it'll be like you know, <laughs> you know the the rose moon sponsored by okay anyway oh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble with our producer let's move on <laughs> We like talking about the moon, producer. Anyway, uh, lots of clouds. Uh, look at the haze out there. I mean, just all that humidity hanging around. And uh, this weekend, it is going to be tomorrow. It's going to be kind of glitchy on this graphic, too. But uh, we'll have wind out of the uh, southeast about 15, 20 miles per hour. A little breezy tomorrow as well as uh, today. And then Sunday, temperatures go down a little bit. We are going to have a few more clouds hanging around here on Sunday. And we will start to see some rain chances. Today and tomorrow, nothing. Clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. Then on Sunday, and again, this is not, you know, everywhere rain. It's kind of broad brush, but we will start to see those rain chances move into the picture with a few more clouds. Obviously, that's going to help to keep temperatures down. Same thing on Monday, although better rain chances Monday as well as on Tuesday. And some of those rain chances will definitely continue into Wednesday and Thursday. Probably not as great a shot at some rain, but still a pretty good chance. Uh, going into Wednesday and Thursday. So we've got mid upper 70s around here and off to the Pacific Northwest. It's not bad as of right now, but they have just been struggling with heat and that high is going to be plunked down right on top of those folks. And so they're really going to get a taste of what we usually have in the, the summertime. But with us, though, We've got that big trough developing in the middle part of the country, and that's kind of an unusual feature this time of year. What that's going to do is it's combining with the fact that this high is well off to the east of us. So we get these little disturbances that are going to be coming on in here. That's going to help out with not only temperatures, but also some rain chances. And this really is not going to be changing going into next week with some of, the, again, these little disturbances, which will just be sort of hanging out. We get that flow coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. No big tight lid on the atmosphere, and so there will be that chance of rain. 88 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature then makes it up to 96, about three above normal. Factor in the humidity, up in the hundreds, kind of breezy. Again, more of the same tomorrow. Then Sunday, we start to see the changes. Then Monday, Tuesday of the next seven days. Those are the two days with the best chance of rain as it looks right now and highs in the upper 80s. What I was going to say is next time it'll be the Rose Mood sponsored by 1-800-Flowers or something like that. Oh, yeah, it's let's, coming. Let's make it happen. That's right. Thank you, Mike. 650 right now, about 77 degrees. Well, after an economically and emotionally stressful year in 2020, business is booming for tattoo artists tomorrow on GMSA. One shop owner tells us why it's more than just playing catch up. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is still to come right here on GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here, we are live in Florida with the latest on that deadly building collapse, the race against time as crews search for survivors. So many questions about what caused that 40-year-old building to come crashing down. We have a team there live on the ground, and we'll bring you that and so much more right here on GMA. A house party here on the west side ends with a bang. Gunshots that wound two people. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police believe one of those wounded people is the one who actually pulled the trigger. Uh, they began showing up here around 3.30 this morning. They say they found about 10 people still at this home in the 900 block of Southwest 36th Street. Holdovers from what had been a house party, according to police. Investigators say a man who may have been playing with a gun shot himself in the hand. The same bullet that then hit another man in the belly, critically wounding him. The man accused of pulling the trigger then jumped into his car, tried to drive himself to a hospital. Police say he made it only to Highway 90 in Sarzamora, where he pulled over and called for help. But both of the men involved in the shooting are about 18 years old, according to police. Detectives are still trying to determine whether to file any charges. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Right now it's 5 to one more check with the traffic with Stephen Cavazos. Good Friday morning. I can say that, you know, roads are looking pretty smooth right now. There are some issues that quickly resolve. Let's go ahead and get right to it. View at Trans Guide does show I-10 at Frio, US 90. People getting more out on the roads and things are looking pretty smooth right now, guys. But we have spotted a stalled vehicle right over here of 281 southbound right at Sunset Boulevard. Uh, we are seeing more traffic heading out on the roads now that things are getting a little bit picking up a little bit here. But just be careful for that stalled vehicle that's out there. We'll be watching it pretty closely as well. Other than that, pretty quiet area crash just popped up over here near Seguin. We'll be looking at how that may impact your morning commute, but right now things are looking pretty swell. Thank you, sir. And uh, boy, lots of uh, heat and humidity just like the past few days this week. Temperature right now is at 78 degrees Add about uh, three, four degrees to that. And that's what it feels like. 96 high temperature today. And it's going to be kind of breezy. Of course, the heat index is going to be well up into the hundred. Same thing tomorrow. Then we start to see the transition into some lower temperatures and better rain chances next week. That's a wrap. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here, GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next with the latest out of South Florida.